Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be going way out west as I check out Great Escape Games' new two-player starter set for Dead Man's Hand Redux. Okay, this is the Dead Man's Hand Redux Become the Legend, uh, the two-player starter set from Great Escape Games. Uh, first off, it's a hell of a big box. It is a brutal beast. As thick as one hand. And there's a reason for that. Oh, Lord. It contains a town. So, this contains everything you need to start two people into playing Dead Man's Hand. Uh, card deck, gangs, buildings, Dyson tokens, and even some scattered terrain. Um, it's a massive, massive box. Uh, and let's dive in and see what is inside it. Okay, we have a bag containing our gang, or gangs. So two sprue of Gunfighter 1, one sprue of Gunfighter 2. So that's 15 figures. Um, five female, ten male, to split up whatever way you want and a rake of bases as well. We'll look at this in more detail in a moment. We have our instructions for the buildings. And then we have the buildings themselves. So, one bag contains two, four, six, eight sprues duck boards, and then the actual building floors and walls, and then another bag contains the scatter, so all sorts of bits and bobs in there, wagon wheels, crates, cases, bags of flour, axes, embedded in logs if you want. Uh, and then the roof slash front of the buildings as well. So this bag contains uh, seven sprues. Again, we'll take a closer look at everything in more detail shortly. You get a sheet of cardboard tokens. So movement, uh, under fire, out of ammo. Measuring ruler, um, 10 centimeters long. Two sets of die, or dice. Um, D10 for combat and nerve, D20 for shooting and other tests. The Redux deck of cards. This is how the game is played. Little mini cards, as you can see. Quite cute. And the rules and a bookmark. And the rules is A4. So, let's start delving into this in more detail. So we'll start with the female gunfighters. Now, I do already have um, an unboxing video for both the male and female gunfighters, which means if you want to see them in greater detail and built, you can, just by having a look at that. But to give you an idea, uh, the sprue contains five lower bodies um, and then five torsos, which are all interchangeable, a whole selection of pistols, um, rifles, shotguns, and then other accessories. So we have some empty holsters, you've got a lamp, um, a little cacti for basing a chicken for cooking. Uh, up at the top, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven heads, some of which have these ponytails in the back. So you can make a whole host of them in a variety of ways. Um, there are a few wearing 
dust masks, which could mean that they drop in with the bandits. Uh, other ones may be townsfolk helping out the law. It's entirely up to you. And then we have the same for the uh, first Dead Man's Hand Sprue. Get two of these, so you make ten in total. But again, same sort of idea. Five torsos, five lower legs, bit of posability in there, all interchangeable. Some additional pieces like the cattle skull, another cacti rope, some dynamite, and again, a host of pieces uh, and weaponry. So pistols, shotguns. Shotguns can be made so the breaches are open. So you see the back of the shotgun here. You can glue them so they are ready to fire or you can have it popped open as if they've just expelled a couple of cartridges. Saddlebags and the like as well for your villains fleeing the scene. Some townspeople or outlaws depending on your, your choices. I like the guy with the sack on his head. He's one of my favourites. Uh, but really nice comprehensive set of figures. Uh, you need about seven max for a Dead Man's Hand gang. So with 15 in there, uh, it lets you do your 14 side and you've got a spare. Uh, there's also 15 bases. These are standard uh, 25 mil rounds. Flat on one side, slightly textured on the other so they grip the matcher on and don't slide around like little tokeny shuttlecock things. So, those, done, dusted. Now I want the new stuff. And we'll start with the Street Scatter Sprue. So, what have we got? Uh, right off the bat, there are a slew of boxes, crates, cases uh, that you can use to stack up outside a building or in the back of a wagon. Um, we have a barrel, a uh, large sort of steel churn or for your milk, um, axe and log that has the indent in it so you can have the axe buried in such to keep the, uh, the blade from rusting. There's a slew of bottles, one, two, three, five, six, seven loose bottles. There is, if I flip this over, a little uh, crate with six left in it and some empty spaces. So you could have them in there if you want to fill that up or you can have them loose lying around. Uh, and then the other bits and pieces are a variety of bags and crates, nicely textured, riveting on the outside of these big travel cases like steamer trunks uh, and then a small barrel as well. So. They should be relatively quick to build. Some of them are one piece, like the possible bale of material there. There's a suitcase here, which is one piece as well. So it's just the larger ones that you're gonna to have to build. So we'll take a look at those when they're all built. Next up, we have our boardwalk sprue. Uh, the biggest sprue you get, so Start up here. Again, another barrel, a set of steps, a saddle, um, a water trough and hitching post. So you can hang the saddle over the hitching post. We also have a bucket with handle in case you're planning on making any wells. And so this is reversed there. So you want to think of this as uh, two halves. The boardwalks don't need to be assembled. The Likewise, the steps, they're all good to go already. So really the only thing you're gonna to have to do is glue the barrels together and the handles and the saddles. Everything else is, um, is pretty much pop off the sprue and start painting, which is excellent because nobody wants to spend time building boardwalks. Not when they've got killing to do. Then on to the big thing that sets this apart from the previous edition. Uh, as far as starter sets go, the buildings. So here we have the first sprue. It's actually two identical pieces. 
this is your floor slash ceiling. Uh, so you can see the indents here around the top. These are for your walls, um, doors, that sort of thing. And if I flip it over, uh, they also have the abatements on the bottom and also your uh, bracing, I suppose, the floor joists um, for the upper ceiling. So this is a, a stackable kit and that's part and parcel of how they've designed this is to help them make two story buildings, um, which is really nicely done. Nice level of chunky detail in there. If you're going to be washing or dry brushing, speed paints, that sort of thing, they'll all pop up on this. Footprint wise, it is at its widest point, 150 mil and approximately 100 mil wide. So a nice footprint of a building. So that's our floor. Then we have two sprues for the walls. This first sprue has our shingled roof. Um, really thick slab of plastic there. Must be probably almost five mil at its thickest point. So really robust, not gonna be curving, buckling or breaking easily. And then we have our two walls. They are approximately 45 mil tall. A couple of windows on one side. Other side is just a flash finished wall. Our other wall sprue is a bit more fun. It contains all sorts of other additional pieces again. So we have street dog, a couple of birds, crows to sit on the uh, veranda and wait for people to be shot up. Uh, we have the door and frame, again, front and back, uh, an internal wall, which is optional, uh, and a second door for it. And again, another crew and barrel. So even on these building sprues, they've still managed to get some additional pieces in there just for variation and a bit more scatter. Finally, we have the veranda and well, these are parts of the roof. So optional veranda cover way, three uprights to put it on. Then we have our front facade, allowing you to put your store, you know, Chinese laundry, hardware store, gunsmith, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and then these just let you have the, the slope on your roof again as an optional piece um, because you could just leave these, well not leave them off but not glue them on and you might be able to stack up multiple levels of the bat. Uh, to show you what I mean by that, if we bring the instructions in, the instructions have been done in a similar way to the wagon that I looked at a while ago. So certain, I imagine you'll be able to buy single story double story or varieties thereof uh, so some pieces will not be available but they're color coded it shows you very simply there and this is how the, the roof assembles so you've got those two angled pieces roof facade goes on um, and that will build your single story house with duckboard if you want to add it but then we also have these pieces here so upper balcony which is not in this set Stairs, not in this set, but they will be in the two-story house version. And this has a different setup for the roof. So rather than just that single slope coming off the back. Fun times to come with those. Right, that's enough of the plastics. Let's take a look at the book. All right, so 
the rule book, and then the cards. Very important to play the game. As you can see, the cards have got this lovely uh, classic back on them. Bit aces and eights, all about the dead man's hand. Um, the deck themselves, if I pop out one side here, if you're unaware of how Dead Man's Hand plays, you either have a gang that uses red cards or a gang that uses the black cards. However, the face cards are unique to a specific gang. So lawmen may use hearts, cowboys may use diamonds. So you would use all of the red cards that you're told in the scenario. And then the face cards that are appropriate to your, your gang, which changes how they play a little. Um, two through ten is the same for all factions, red and black. So when you play them, they're either used as initiative via the number on them, or they can be played from your hand, and your scenario will tell you how many cards start in your hand, uh, and they replenish very slowly, only one a turn. So you can blow quite a lot in one go if you really, really want to, but you're going to be at a disadvantage afterwards, so you need to make it count. These have been changed slightly. Uh, from version one. Um, so Dust in Your Eye has changed. Uh, this is probably the biggest one after 10 years of play. Uh, it didn't really get used much because of the, the old um, ability on it. Now when your uh, opposing player declares shoot actions for the turn, uh, the first action that the character takes automatically misses, um, which is makes it a bit better. There's also some other changes uh, from feedback from players. So things like, I like the way you die. You can play uh, to take one free aim action uh, or alternatively can be used to cancel an opponent's duck back or quick shot interruption. Uh, so normally you can only cancel cards by having the same card in your hand. So if they play an eight and you play an eight, that'll cancel it out. So. There's probably a few other little small things, and definitely with the face cards, there's probably some changes in there. But the uh, the standard decks are more or less the same, just been tweaked to take a, account of FAQs and feedback from people. The new Redux book then. Again, A4 book as before. It is approximately 50 pages long. And the level of um, layout has improved significantly. I mean, it's 10 years on. Um, it's gone down an absolute storm. And the original was filled with a lot of line drawings and, and a few images in here. Now it's practically wall-to-wall -wall full colour images, as you can see, um, all showing off the lovely new terrain and some of their... Uh, metal figures as well. So the book itself tells you how you play the game. Uh, the first 15 pages is everything you need to play a basic game. That takes you up to hand to hand. So your nerve chests and all the other bits and pieces all in there. Um, then after that they start to get into more narrative rules. So if you want to have livestock um, want to bring mounts into the game because there's nothing better than riding into town and jumping off a mount or vice versa robbing a bank and jumping onto a mount and running off or stampeding livestock through the middle of town as well uh, hijacking stagecoach all of that so you've got a comprehensive overview of that followed by the action cards and how they work and the way they work within individual factions as well so the desperados what they get then you have your four factions for this book. So lawmen and outlaws, the cowboys and desperados. These are the original four factions from the original book. So 10 years old, a couple of changes in here as well. Um, desperados and outlaws have been given an additional type of um, unit for want of a better word. Uh, everybody has a boss. Everybody has a gun hand of some description, 
whether it's a marshal or a gunslinger, then you've got your regulars, in this case deputies, and then you can have additional plebs, so upstanding citizens or varmints, whatever. Uh, and that's generally the setup for most of the, the factions currently. Uh, with Redux now coming out, it changes it so the outlaws get a fugitive as an additional option and the desperados get hijackers as additional options as well. Um, and then the book finishes off with the scenarios which are called acts and scenes. Uh, Dead Man's Hand plays in a really nice way where it's essentially a three act structure. So you play a Act one, meeting, an act two, escalation, and then an act three, resolution. Think about any film you've ever seen or TV show. This recreates that. So a scenario isn't one, well, I suppose, well, a scenario can be one act and then three scenarios together is the whole film, like a mini campaign. And this has been laid out absolutely stunningly as these dead man's hand news broadsheets so each one has got a full page intro including advertisements for snake oil and other bits and pieces and then the reverse gives you your act two and act three um, all the directions you need the cast is um, the, the gang selection the set is your terrain you need to set up um, the directions are any unique or special deployment or victory conditions um, and then you know any other details you need and I absolutely adore this as far as a style of setup goes um, and there are quite a few in here as you can see means that if you're going to be playing this at a, a club or a convention you can photocopy off and hand out each person uh, involved to their own little broadsheet that tells them everything and that's just unnecessary for the actual game but beautiful for the game setting um, and I just adore that. Then you've got actual campaign rules uh, which have been clarified. Campaign always caused me issues before because of the, um, the way it was set up. I never really got my head around the uh, methodology of, of how you set up your campaign and how you worked out what your uh, your faction was supposed to be doing and x y and z so here it's all been not just clarified but um streamlined i suppose to a certain degree uh, and you get a, an idea of how your gang can change over time as well so that is dead man's hand the book and the cards. All right, I'm back and uh, I've built up all of the scatter and building. As you can see, here is the little building with optional veranda. I pop that on the front. It may stay in place for a moment. It is with the veranda attached, roughly 185 millimeters long. Um, so you get a bit of an extension with that. We'll start with the veranda itself. Simple construction, three support beams, uh, go into the recesses on the bottom of the veranda. And then if you're attaching it to the building or to the boardwalk, it will be a bit more sturdy. It will sit, uh, so it's about midway on the building itself. So I'm not sure if it glues to the roof or to the, uh, set that down for a moment. I suppose it would glue to the first floor, which makes sense. Um, probably could magnetize it if you want to take the time and effort. I honestly don't know if it would be worth magnetizing it. I suppose it gives you more flexibility with your build. Um, as you can see, the internal wall can be set in a variety of places. Obviously it will only go short wise across without some um, substantial amount of modification. 
Although if you're not going to use them, because you don't have to, which means then you'll have a separate wall somewhere. So you can then take this and then take another wall from another house uh, and then subdivide it even further, which is nice. The doors themselves are hinged. So that door frame rebate sits in there. Um, when I came to the build, slight bowing on the longer sections, uh, although I didn't have to worry about clamping or uh, taping it up. I just relied on the glue and the fit to hold it in place. Um, when it comes to the roof, slight bowing on the actual roof slash floor piece, which means if I connect it back together, if it flush on the back, it pops at the front. Flush on the front, pops in the back. That you probably could clamp um, to remove that altogether. In gameplay terms, when you're playing with it, if there's a slight gap here or there, you're not really going to see it. Uh, not once it's painted, and if you've got the brand on, you certainly won't. But for the fastidious amongst us, um, you may want to check which has got less of a bow in it before you use one for the ceiling and one for the floor. Um, or, like I say, clamp it down when you're starting to glue it together. Otherwise, construction was very quick and the uh, texturing on them is really nice. It does give you an overall height for the building with bird on. Uh, of uh, just shy of 105, no, just shy of 110 mil. Um, so about two mil short of that. Obviously, you've got additional pieces you can pop in there. So that's a really nice solid construction, though. Should be very sturdy and last a long time. Then we have the boardwalks. So the door itself does not come to the ground. However, via the use of steps, lastly, or the duckboard, and then you can have steps wherever you so desire. So they're quite cute. And obviously you can then run it around the side of the buildings, build a whole uh, western town if you want to. This sprue is going to be available separately, uh, which gives you not just these duckboard pieces as you've seen, but also then things like the hitching posts. So you can have those outside, which is really cute. Um, Size-wise, let's remove our building. Three pieces of boardwalk are exactly the same size. Where are we? Yes, one, two, three. And then one is slightly longer. So that gives us three at 100 mil and then one at 110 mil, um, if that is what you're after. Pop those out of the way. Uh, other constructions from this then, you've got the little barrels, the buckets with optional, or not optional, separate handle. I'm not sure if these would have been fixed or if they would have been hinged. I have made one folded over slightly as if it was hingeable. Um, I've not decided to look into buckets before in the, what, mid to late 1800s in America. Presumably they would be hingeable. I know we certainly have coal buckets like that at home. Um, so they all had hinges. The little Labrador dog is very cute. Three of these. 
um, man's best friend, just there for decoration, or perhaps you'll want a pack of stray dogs to attack people in the street. Either is viable. You can do that. Uh, with the hitching posts and your saddlebags, they are very quick two-piece construction. Uh, if you want to make sure that they fit, probably best glue them over the uh, the hitching post, which I'm led to believe is a Hollywoodism. Uh, in reality, towns wouldn't have them in front of buildings and saloons because nobody wants to try and get around horses or horse shit in the street. However, for something like Dead Man's Hand, which is very much leaning into Western as a genre rather than as an actual uh, historical recreation, then hitching posts everywhere are great. So I really like those. Now, our accessories. Okay, the accessory sprue then. Um, I'll start with my least favourite pieces. Uh, these two little crates. Uh, hopefully you can see, you can actually see right through them, which is nice. Uno, dos. Uh, the reason I, they're my least favourite pieces, there are two little locking lugs uh, at either side, but there's none on the short ends, uh, which means trying to line up the banding around them. I was constantly pushing it too far to one side, too far to the other. It does give them a rough ramshackle look, which at the end of the day, they're crates. They're not fine pieces of, of work. Um, but I just feel it would have been a bit neater if they'd had those uh, located on the, the long edge rather than the short edge, or perhaps both. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to square those crates up. However, you can get them together, and then once they're together, probably want to give the banding a bit of a, a file down just to um, have it all looking nice and neat and one construction. A small barrel like the large barrel, very quick and easy to put together. The um, keying on opposite corners helps square it up very easily. Then we have our larger pieces like the large crate or large wooden box, the steamer trunk with clasps and hinges. Again, nice piece of kit. Uh, we have our woodsman's axe embedded in stump. Very good for outside the homestead. There are a couple of little Travelling cases could be filled with paper money or gold, maybe coming into town to pay the uh, local miners or what have you. Another larger, more secure chest. So plenty of scatter that way. There's this little hinged box, no back or sides to it. So it obviously sits up against something. Uh, could be in front of a building. So maybe it could be sitting sort of to the fore uh, or inside one of the wagons because it has a look of something that would sit maybe with additional parts, tools, that sort of thing to repair. The little crate is possibly my favorite. Um, I did take one of the bottles off the sprue. I don't want to lose the other ones yet, but it does neatly fit in there with its friends. And shockingly, the height is pretty much spot on with the rest of them. Um, so the, the sizing is ridiculously good, which means you could put together a full crate of uh, beer or hard liquor, if that's what you want. So that's about half of the scatter. The other half, I grabbed one of my wagons and just loaded up the back with it. Now, yes, that wagon wheel wouldn't be there if it was actually for this wagon. It would be slung underneath. Um, so it's not taking up space inside. But you can see here, we've got the milk churn, large barrel, those bales, suitcase, another steamer trunk, a stack of bags with this one 
that's uh, flattened on one end, sitting upright towards the rear. Uh, not glued in yet, but if I was to flip it around like that, you can see one sprue of um, scatter will fill two wagons quite handsomely. Uh, and it's nothing, nothing better than having full wagons being towed around town especially if you have a couple of flatbeds that are open. Obviously there's also covers available for these wagons. So if I grab one of those, and then let's look in the rear. Will you be able to see that? No, no you won't. Oh, you will kind of. There you go. So yeah, the, um, the scatter is a really, really nice touch. And I'm hoping that that separately available in the same way that the boardwalk and duck boards will be um, because I've got a, a wagon train that I need to fill. Uh, so yeah, the the building sprues are really, really good. The sheer volume of kit you get with the sc scatter and the um, boardwalks will mean populating your town with actual things to rob or protect. Uh, in short order should be very very easy indeed uh, and I'm really really happy to see how they've turned out they've been a, a real bonus to this whole redux for Dead Man's Hand. So there we go uh, I'm a big fan of Dead Man's Hand um, as anybody who's browsed this channel at any point will know uh, love it to bits I've previously looked at the cow, cowboys and cowgirls um, and the wagons um, in, in past unboxings from my own collection. Uh, so it was really nice to see what was happening with Redux, how Great Escape Games were planning on changing it up. Uh, and the answer is not massively. Uh, very much the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, so just there's one or two little clarifications, some tidies up um, to make it easier for people to access the, the game itself if they're coming in afresh without having a whole plethora of books to worry about. Uh, the big thing in the two-player starter set are those buildings. Uh, the start of a, a whole range coming from Great Escape Games, so there'll be two-story versions as well. Uh, being able to set the scene is very important for a Western, um, and they have a very distinct look. You can get away with Napoleonics and World War II and X, Y, and Z all having more or less the same European-style houses because they carried on for so long. But when you've got that period of the, the, the Old West with the, the duck boards, the flat fronted buildings with the, the big uh, signage, sort of fake frontage to, to make them look uh, more impressive than they were, that all has a, a place. Um, and having things like the little hitching posts and the, the barking dog and a barrel full of hickory handles outside of a, a hardware store, it all adds part and parcel to it and, and makes it a, a more realistic game and a more interesting area to play on. Having three of them in the core set just gives people a, a massive push. Uh, a lot of times you're going to be playing very small, tight, close-in games with Dead Man's Hand, so you don't need a huge amount to begin with, uh, and three buildings is, is excellent. Uh, it's a fantastic box set, and if you're planning on getting into the Wild West, uh, it's definitely one to grab. Let me know what you think below, folks. Until next time, bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.